Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, March 28th, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, Apple updated everything again. Everything in this case also included the Apple iWork Office applications. Haven't really seen any specific patches being released for iWork in the past from Apple. In this case, it fixes a problem with the document password encryption. Up to now, it used RC4, which of course is not the greatest encryption algorithm to put it like they now change that to AS128. For Safari, Apple fixed 38 different vulnerabilities. Didn't see anything really special or out of the ordinary here. Of course, there are several code execution vulnerabilities in here. That's one reason why you definitely do want to patch this. Now, there are a number of other typical web browser vulnerabilities that are being addressed, like same origin validations. Uh, there are some cross-site scripting issues in WebKit that are uh, being patched. And then of course, some denial of service conditions. Mac OS Sierra and OS X El Capitan also received updates. Uh, now, there are a couple of ones that sort of stick out. First of all, updates uh, to open source software that Apple is using, for example, Libre SSL. The SSL library that Apple is using for Apache received an update. PHP received an update. An interesting update for Thunderbolt. I thought something like this was already fixed in the last update. Essentially, as the system boots, the the file vault password may leak via Thunderbolt. This is an issue where Thunderbolt really sort of physically has access to the system's bus. Now there are some software protections that are put in place to prevent someone from just plugging in a device into Thunderbolt and reading memory. But during boot, these software protections aren't always active and leave a gap that can be exploited in order to, like in this case, read the file vault to password. And of course, bugs like that uh, were also included in the infamous CIA leak uh, that uh, was released a couple weeks ago. Now, TCP Dump always was updated. Remember a couple months ago, TCP Dump released a big update that patched a good number of security vulnerabilities. They're now all included in the OS X version of TCP Dump. There's a lot of overlap, of course, with iOS. It also received an update that fixes, for example, all these WebKit and various font parts of vulnerabilities that it had in common with OS X and Safari because there's a lot of shared code base. The one interesting kind of vulnerability being patched here is the ability of third-party apps to initiate phone calls. Remember that particular vulnerability was used as a prank essentially via Twitter in order to trick iPhone users to call 911, which led actually to a denial of service against a 911 system. The vulnerabilities being addressed for watchOS and tvOS are mostly vulnerabilities also addressed for Safari again, so lots of WebKit vulnerabilities, also the usual parse of vulnerabilities. Interesting one that sort of stuck out to me here was an X509 parsing vulnerability in watchOS that can be used to execute arbitrary code. So in short, update them all. There are critical vulnerabilities that you need to address. There's certainly a lot of interest in exploits for these devices. And uh, yes, some of these vulnerabilities are certainly exploitable remotely, meaning via the user visiting a malicious web page, and they can lead to arbitrary code execution. I should probably point out that some of the vulnerabilities being patched here were exploited as part of the Pwn to Own contest at CanSec West. Now, once support for a particular piece of software operating system ends, that doesn't mean that development of new exploit ceases. And that's true today for Windows Server 2013 and IIS 6. Now, IIS 6, if I remember correctly, support ended for it in 2015. But today's vulnerability does enable a pretty straightforward remote code execution against IIS 6 and Windows 2013 
if WebDAV is enabled. No idea how common this particular setup is, but I do see WebDAV enabled quite a bit for systems like SharePoint, for example, and I wouldn't be surprised if there's quite a number of IS6 systems still around. Netgraph, for example, is counting around 400,000 Windows Server 2003 systems still exposed as web servers to the internet. Uh, didn't see a breakdown by IIS versions. So if you haven't cleaned up your old Windows 2003 IS6 systems yet, uh, this is your last warning and you probably should do so right now. And then just a quick update on the Symantec Google Certificate Authority SPAD. Well, Symantec released another statement essentially saying that they will just re-sign certificates if that's what it comes down to. Essentially what will happen, uh, outlined some of the timeline in a diary today that uh, Google Chrome will only trust SL certificates being issued by Symantec for nine months. At least that's what they're working towards and this will be effective about a year from now if I got the Google Chrome versions right. So at this point, uh, Symantec will just keep re-signing certificates for free for uh, their customers. It's of course still a pain to do all of that, uh, but we'll see. This is still a proposal by Google, so there may be some other solution or agreement they'll come up with by then. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.